Howdy ho folks! Uh, today we're going to do something fun. We are going to be taking a look at the two new uh, damage mods <laughs> that have been introduced into the game with Corpus Railjack called Internal Bleeding and Hemorrhage. And these two mods uh, you can just get uh, as, you know, uh, bonus, bonus rewards for doing the side objectives and the whatnots uh, when completing uh, Corpus Railjack missions. I think you get them from, from like, uh, Neptune Proxima? I, I think? Might be Pluto Proxima. Oh, who know? Who knows? We can look that up. Um, the point is, uh, they are new damage mods. So, the, the, uh, they, you know, didn't have these before. And the obvious question then is, are they gonna, you know, shape the meta? Are they gonna become meta? Are these... The new damage mods that you slot into every weapon that you have and, and you know, all of that stuff. How do you use them, right? How do you use them? Well, the answer is no. Uh, you cannot slot them into just any weapon. Uh, but they do have some use and there are a couple of weapons in the game that absolutely, absolutely benefit from these. And benefit from them quite a lot as well. So we're going to go through this and by the end of it, hey, maybe you will have learned... A thing or two about how uh, status chance works and how you can you know manipulate it to your advantage uh, so let's dive right in shall we now first things first when you look at the mods themselves uh, what you see here is that like, it's the same rules for both the rifle one and the pistol one um, it's that impact status effects have a 35% chance to also apply a Slash status effect. Now this is interesting because like that's the been the problem with with the uh, status effects as it is that slash is so much better than uh, impact and puncture. So like hey, how do we make impact good? We make impact good by making it also do slash. <laughs> so just so people understand how this works. Damage types and status effects are two different things. Like, we're going down to the very, very basics here, okay? A weapon can do impact damage. That's a damage type. But a weapon can also uh, have a status chance, and that is the chance for your uh, different damage types to, to cause a status effect. And every damage type has its own status effect. The status effect of impact is something called stagger. It's just you knock back the enemies and you, they, they get stunned and stuff, right? So, since I have a 6% status chance on my Exceltra, what that means is that whenever I deal impact damage to an enemy, I have a 6% chance of staggering them as well. That's what that means. And slash status effect is bleeding, which is a damage over time effect that ignores armor. Th that's better than giving an enemy a little knockback and a stun, I'll tell you that much. It's better, okay? Uh, there, there's more to it. There's more to status chance and how, how you can get the different status effects to proc. But we'll start here. So, you know, the status effect of heat. Well, that's, you know, a, 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 a burning effect that deal some damage over time and also causes the enemy to lose a bit of armor momentarily while, while it's active. Um, the status effect of Viral is a debuff that makes enemies take more damage from, from all sources. Stuff like that. The damage effect of Corrosive is uh, like reduced armor. The damage effect of Cold is, you know, slow. So you just gotta know about all that stuff. So, weapons are typically divided up into, like, crit weapons, status weapons, or hybrid weapons. So if you have, like, a lot of base hit chance, then you can increase it even more with mods. And then you can get up to, like, stupid crit chance values, and you can get, like, guaranteed crits or whatever. And you also have status weapons that have, like, really, 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 really high status chance. And you can get that up to 100% or whatever, and then you can be, like, guaranteed to get, uh, you know... Uh, some sort of status proc on basically any any attack you do. Take something like the um, uh, the Kuva Nucor, which is you know very popular among people for for like just spreading status effects. It can have a lot of different status effects at once, 
And you can also get a very high status chance, which lets you be pretty much guaranteed to, to cause a bunch of status effects on enemies at the same time, which is good. Now, to these new mods then. So, for the mod to work, you have to be able to uh, create an impact status effect. Like, for example, the Exeltra. See, it has... It has uh, it's got impact damage, so it can do, like, impact procs. And in this case, doing an impact proc would also cause a slash proc, right? So far, so good. But then you'd be like, but Nick, Nick, the Exeltra has a really, really low status chance. So there's almost no chance of cro causing an impact proc, and therefore it should be, like, no chance of, even less of a chance of getting, like, uh, a status proc, right? Like, a slash proc. Uh, from it. And we'll get to that as well, people. We'll get to that as well. Now, normally you would, of course, be correct in that. Uh, in in that you, you'd like... So you'd assume that the weapon you want is uh, a weapon that has, like, a really, really high status chance and also primarily does, like, impact damage or does, like, a lot of impact damage. And you could get a weapon... To do that for you. But here's the problem. That's gonna suck. <laughs> That's gonna be really bad. And let me explain to you why. This is the other really important lesson. That is how uh, status effects are uh, distributed. When you get like a high status chance. For this example. I'm going to demonstrate with a weapon that I've prepared. Um, for this occasion. Uh, this here. Axtilero Prime. Dumped a bunch of four minutes just so I can show this. Here is how status chance works, okay? Say I have a 100% status chance. This is 84, so this is pretty high. But say I have a 100% status chance. Every single hit that I deal to an enemy can only deal one status effect. You can't deal multiple in the same hit. So... This weapon does a lot of different stuff. See, it does impact, puncture, slash, heat, viral, all of those. So the question then would be, when I hit an enemy, which status effect is going to get inflicted on it? Is it going to get an impact proc, a puncture proc, a slash proc, a heat proc? And uh, it's not random. It can only be one for every hit, and it's not random. It's based on how much damage that thing does. Right? So, say for example here. I do a total of 1000 damage per shot. But I have 150 impact damage. So the impact is 15% of the total damage. No, no, it's more. Oh, sorry, I forgot to account for the, <laughs> the multi-shot. Uh, which ramps up the, the total, total DPS. But if we just look at the different damage types we'll see that it's, what, 140 to 210, 260, 400 or something, something around. Something around between 400 and 450 is the actual sort of damage distribution. So like a third of the damage from the weapon, even more than that. Even more than that. Closer to like... No, about a third. Like about a third of the damage from the weapon is... Impact damage, which means that whenever I fire a, a hidden enemy with this, it's going to be like 30% chance that the status effect is going to be an impact proc. And it's going to be a very, very low chance that it's going to be like a puncture proc, because it's so low. And, and like, that's how you build, like, melee weapons if you want them to be sort of, like, really busted, because since uh, Slash is, you know, usually the premier uh, status effect. Slash is usually the, the uh, status effect that you want to inflict on an enemy. Then you can uh, mod your weapon for that. So like you mod your weapon to intentionally have Slash as the strongest damage type. So you don't want to like stack a bunch of different elemental mods in there. No, you want Slash to be the highest one because that means that most of the time when you deal a status effect to an enemy, it's gonna be a slash proc. And that's how you build melee weapons if you really want to get up to the endgame stuff. You know, there are a couple of different ways you can build melee weapons, but I'm just, I'm just 
explaining the principle behind it. So, say we put this into, like, a gun, right? Because uh, then you, you, what you want for this to be effective is you want a bunch of impact procs. You want it to proc impact damage. But for that to happen consistently, then impact has to be, like, the primarily the kind of damage that the gun does. So you have to put in, like, stuff like pummel and whatnot or whatever to make sure that none of these other... Uh, status effects overtake it. Now the problem is that impact by itself is just like not that interesting as a damage type. It just does some knockbacks and stuff. So... So say we do that and like empty an entire magazine into a we into like an enemy. Now we'll see here that he gets like 10 impact procs and... And uh, like, oh, like four slash procs or something. So yeah, that makes sense. Because it was about, it should, should be like 35%. Okay. Entire magazine that did that to like a, okay, sure. It's not, it's not, it's not, you know, pitiful or anything. But it's kind of not what we were looking for, right? Damage wise. Kind of not what we were looking for. Because in that case, right? We can just, I don't know, put Magnum Force to just do more damage. And instead of Pummel, we can just chuck in... Uh, like some, bam, more viral damage or something like that, right? We get more viral procs instead. And we'll try to do the exact same thing, and it's like... And as you can see, it's like we're gonna get about the same results. It's just like, it didn't really do a whole lot to just get a couple of slash procs in there on primarily like sort of shitty impact hits. So that's not the way to go. That's not what you're after uh, with this. No. So now we're gonna come to the actual use for these mods. The actual use. And that is that there are a couple of weapons in the game that have guaranteed impact procs that's just like how they are designed you you shoot the weapon and despite what it actually says about like its distribution of different status stuff it you just have to know you just have to know that it also does an a guaranteed impact proc as just you know part of how the weapon works Hey, check it out. One of those weapons is a Tomb Finger. <laughs> yeah, the Tomb Finger was guaranteed impact procs on its, like, explosion. So it doesn't matter the distribution here. Yeah, sure. I think, you know, you gotta, like, look at that. I got, like, more status chance from, like, a Riven mod and stuff. So it doesn't have, like, the base, biggest status chance or whatever. But it, th this distribution doesn't matter with the Tomb Finger. Because it will do impact procs. As, as part of just how it works. So, let's check it out, shall we? Uh, let's do this, exact same thing, Magnum Force. Just more damage, we'll put that in first. More damage, less accuracy, who cares? And then we'll just shoot this guy with a Tomb Finger. It's six shots. So it took about nine shots to kill like a, a corrupted heavy gunner. Okay. But now, since we know that this thing does do guaranteed impact procs when you when you shoot enemies and they got caught up in the explosion. Let's see what it does now. Oh yeah, they go down. They go down. So that's what you're after. And then you're like, hey Nick, how do I know which weapons do guaranteed impact procs or not? Well, the, like the answer is you don't. <laughs> you just go to the wiki and, and, and look it up because it kind of doesn't just tell you anything. You can't know that uh, in game. You just have to sort of like just... You just have to know which ones it is, right? And one of them is uh, kit guns. Kit guns, like specifically the Tomb Finger and... Uh, the Catch Moon. And guess what? Guess what? It's even stronger on the Catch Moon. It's even stronger on the Catch Moon. 
Uh, we'll do the same thing here. This thing is stupid on the catch moon. So this is with Magnum Force, okay? Same as with the Tomb Finger. I needed about nine shots to kill one of them. Well. Uh, boom. Let's see how many I need now. I needed three shots. And this thing, it also fires in like a wider blast than the, uh, the tomb finger. So you can just, you know, do something like that. And that is fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. So yeah, hey, guess what? Guess what? Catch Moon, it's back in the meta. <laughs> it's 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 back in the meta. Uh, so so like that's kind of it for pistols. Like there are a couple of other pistols that also do like guaranteed impact procs. Like for example, like the the Zakti Prime on a on a direct hit, but it's just it's not going to do the same damage. It's not going to get up there. So when we're talking pistols. And we're talking this mod. We are talking kit guns. We are talking... Uh, oh yeah, I think the Acarius also has like guaranteed impact proc. So that might be something to look into. I think. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, we're talking about the Tomb Finger and the Catch Moon. They are 100% they are back in the meta with this mod. Very potent damage increase for, for those two specifically. Now, we will look at rifles. We'll start with the Exaltra. Because like the I said before, uh, guaranteed impact procs. The Exceltra is one of them. So, you'd think this uh, mod would be good in the Exceltra. Now here's the problem. And this is a pretty big problem. The big problem is that unlike with pistols, for rifles there exists another mod called Hunter Munitions. It is another mod that you can use to force slash procs on enemies. This one doesn't trigger on impact damage, this one trigger triggers on crits. And from testing it out, and just fiddling with different sort of like setups and whatever, uh, it doesn't appear to be efficient to use both of these mods. They don't appear to be to stack like in the way you want. So uh, it's kind of an either or scenario. You either want to use hunter munitions or you want to use internal bleeding. And it's gonna differ from weapon to weapon which is actually the correct choice even if they do have guaranteed impact procs. Um, specifically one thing that actually sort of tips the balance is as you can see here if you use weapons that have a low fire rate uh, the chance goes from 35% to 70%, which is quite significant. Uh, so, th this actually, like, this is pretty much the deciding factor. Weapons that have, like, a really, really high fire rate, and in, in you know, in the case of the Exceltra, also has a very high crit chance, uh, using Hunter Munitions is gonna be better. You're gonna get more slash procs from, from this mod than you are gonna get from this mod. Despite the fact that the Exceltra does have guaranteed impact procs. So that is something to consider. So, let's look at the weapons, the rifles that have guaranteed impact procs, where you do want to use this other one. Now, there are a couple of shotguns that have guaranteed impact procs, like the Archaplasmor and the Estilla. Problem is that you can't use this mod on, on them. Now, you can only use this on, like, rifles and sniper rifles and bows and stuff like that. But shotguns, unfortunately, have their own mods. So that kind of sucks. Like, I think the Corinth Prime's alt fire also does guaranteed impact proc, so that, that would have also been a thing. Um, so, what, what weapons do guaranteed impact procs among the rifles, right? First of all, and I had to try this out right away, uh, the Daikyu. The bow. Now, there are a couple of Daikyu mains out there. I know, I know there's dozens of you. Look, I had to just craft a new Daikyu for this video because I discovered I didn't even have one, okay? This one is... Yeah, I, I put an Oroken Reactor in it, but otherwise it's like... 
no forma, nothing. All right. And the only thing I did with this uh, was that I put in the crit mods, a serration, and then these two. Uh, this 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 thing is busted. This thing that gives like a seventy five percent headshot multiplier um, on the Daiku specifically. You get this from the the Ropa Dopa low list, that boss fight, and um, hey, guess what? It works pretty well together with the internal bleeding. So the Daiku does guaranteed impact procs on hits. It's great. And hey, if you have like a Riven mod for it, it also has like a really high Riven disposition. So you know. That is gonna be good. So with this one, zero investment. I'm only using five out of eight or five out of nine mod slots, right? And it's just like internal bleeding, this and, and some crits. Let's look at what this does to uh, to a level 180 corrupted heavy gunner, shall we? If you headshot, that is. Nope, didn't get the crit because, uh, or the slash proc, because only a 70% chance. Now we got it. That's a one shot! That's a one shot on a corrupted heavy gunner. Level 180. Because hey, slash procs bypass armor. <laughs> right? That's what they do. God damn! So if you play like an Ivara or something and you use Prowl so you get like even more headshot bonuses, like you can do some pretty stupid stuff with a Daiku and internal bleeding. Like this, this is insane here. This is absolutely insane. Low fire rate, really high damage, guaranteed impact proc, which means 70% chance of a slash proc. And you can mod this for elemental damage, you can just ramp this up a lot, you can put in a Riven mod in here. This is gonna be stupid. So the Daiku just got like a million times better. The, Dai the Daiku just got really, really scary <laughs> for, for single target damage. That's, that's one to consider. Hey, guess what? Another one. The Fulmin. Very popular weapon. A lot of people like it, it's great for like low to mid-tier content, but it falls off in the end game. It falls off on, on like the really high level stuff, where it just, it's just not that strong anymore. So, uh, let's look, right? Let's, let's check it out. This isn't modded perfectly, but hey. We'll just look at what it does, you know, without this mod. I'm just gonna stack everyone together. With Maza, with Exodia Hunt. And this is not for the full auto. The full auto just does like, just, you know, lightning damage and, and the whatnot. But the semi auto, this one, like the, the, the shotgun stuff, this actually has guaranteed impact procs on the explosion. So without the mod. This is kind of a pea shooter against like very high level enemies. It's just, it's not gonna do the trick. And this is a weapon I have invested in, right? This this one has, it's got six forma in it, right? And, and a potato and everything. Now I'm gonna chuck internal bleeding in here. Because this weapon does guaranteed impact procs. Let's see what it does now. Oh, look at that! Yeah, suddenly the Fulmin is no longer a pea shooter. Suddenly the Fulmin is perfectly capable of taking out way, way higher level enemies. It's still not like heavy, heavy, heavy hitter, but it's, it's you know, it's much better. It's much better. No, but we're gonna get to the big boys now. We're gonna get to the absolute big boys now. And there are two. Or two that it, that very much stand out of the crowd. Number one, number one, the Kuva Chakur. <laughs> this baby, this bad boy, this bad boy does impact damage. But hey, guess what it also does? It does guaranteed impact procs. I'll show you. I'll show you. 
I oh like heavy caliber is like sort of the perfect comparison mod. Because you just chuck in way more just base damage. So you know, hey, that should be good, right? Grouping everything up. Not that it really matters, but hey. So with heavy caliber. It's okay. It's okay. Does some damage. It's a, it, yeah, it's a, it's a decently heavy hitter. It's okay. It's okay. But. Boom. Eh. And I want to stress that, like, after playtesting, like, these... I I'm showcasing the weapons uh, specifically where uh, using internal bleeding is better than uh, hunter munitions. So that's a clear, clear damage upgrade when you get these constant impact procs. Now, the, the Kuva Chakur was good before as well. It's just, you know, it's just better. But now we're gonna get to the one that's actually sort of on the top of my list. Um, and hey, you wanna do your rail deck stuff, right? It's the Quellor. <laughs> The Quellor, uh, which I know is like, what is it? Is it one of Rebecca Ford's favorite weapons as well, I think? This guy. This guy. Um, here. Yeah, I know. I know, right? I know. I know. 8-4 man, everything. Um, this weapon. It has a full auto. Shoots pretty fast if you have like a prime shred in it, which you want because it also has a very slow charge shot that drains up like just a fourth of its ammo in one shot, something like that, or a fifth. But that alt fire, you know what that alt fire does on the Quellor? If you guessed that the alt fire of the Quellor does guaranteed impact procs. Then you guessed correctly. Here is what it does with a heavy caliber. Nothing. Well, not nothing, but like, hey. Oof. Love that reload sound. Oh, six shots. Took out a couple of them. Took out a couple of them. Now. Since this thing hits like a goddamn truck with a guaranteed impact proc. You, you want to know what, what that means in terms of the damage you do with internal bleeding? Check it out. That's what that does. Oh! <laughs> That's what you want to see. So beautiful. God damn. You know what? Ever since the Quellor first came onto the scene, I was like, this is my jam, this is my weapon, this is my baby, this is my gun. But no matter what I did, no matter how I modded it or how much I invested in it, I couldn't sort of like put it up there and get it up to like the, the S tier weapons. But now, with internal bleeding, the Quellor just became a goddamn powerhouse. And hey... If you're one of those people who likes running with, say, for example, a Wisp, or a Volt, or, you know, some other uh, Warframe that can increase your uh, fire rate. 
increasing your fire rate also increases or you know decreases the charge up time for charge shots so hey if you like the quellor and if you also like the wisp or the vault or something it's like a match made in heaven stupid good absolutely stupid good but like that's about it there's not that many weapons where where you like just you know have those guaranteed impact procs the shadu has like a guaranteed impact proc like when you deplete it or something but that's not that's that's not really what you're after you can't sort of build around that the same way so Unfortunately, not the Exceltra because Hunter Munitions is better. Unfortunately, not the Archaplasma or the Estella because they're shotguns. But, Daikyu, hell yes. Hell yes, extremely strong with this thing. Fulmin, hell yes, extremely strong with this thing. Quellor, hell yes, extremely strong with this new mod. And Kuva Chakur. So, they're like four rifles. Now, th these are, fortunately, for very popular rifles it's four rifles that people really like to use so if you are one of those people who like to use the daikyu the quellor the kuva chakur or the full men guess what they just got a whole lot stronger and hey with the secondaries guess what a lot of people like using the tomb finger and the catch moon <laughs> they're so popular so somewhat niche mods but they happen to to just slot right into a couple of weapons uh, that happen to be very very popular, so that's good. So so these new mods definitely they definitely have their use. Um, if you if you like running with one of the weapons that I've been talking about, I recommend uh, running those railjack missions and getting these new mods. It shouldn't take you too long. Just do all the optional content in the missions and, you know, you're going to eventually get them as end of mission rewards. And go have fun. Go kill things. Just, just, yeah. That's what we do in this game. Now we can do it even better. <laughs>